What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday and Sunday afternoon. It is indeed, Francesca. Another summer Sunday has arrived. What are you laughing at? Because I was just going to say, you know how you're for the rest of the summer, you're going to be able to tell it's we're recording on Sunday because I sound like this. (laughs) Franny 80 packs a day. I've been calling her. Yeah. Never smoked a cigarette in my life, but it sure sounds like I do. You sound like you smoked about 20 at the Surf Lodge last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was not at the Surf Lodge. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not there now. They're no, not going to no, come no. find you. No, I know. But I was never there oh, to okay. begin with. Oh, okay. Dave was there. I was in there. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> I was like, I just want to clarify. I was not there. Oh, I was making a joke because you were in Montauk. No. It's the only I was place in Montauk. I, it's the only place I know of. Yes. I've never even been out in Montauk. Beautiful place. Montauk? Yes. It is a great destination. Beautiful. I always kind of forget about it because I feel like it gets hyped up so much. Mm-hmm. Celebrities, the clubs, whatever, yada, yada, yada. You get there and you're like, this is good shit. Yeah, of course. That's why Beach pe- is beautiful. That's why people love it. That's I know. why people go there. Yeah. That's why people end up in Montauk. Yep. Well, Fran, how are you doing? Uh, I had some late nights, so I'm a little tired. <laughs> tell from my voice seems like I, it. i'm coming off two potential injuries i i hurt my elbow i burned my arm <laughs> you might as well just cut off your left arm yes left arm is is useless you have a my nasty, beautiful left arm my nasty, right arm your dainty left arm you got a my nasty dainty left scar arm has got a is gonna have a big ass scar from from this burn which was an accident accidental hot tray of french fries friend two tattoos and a scar on your arm you're a fucking badass i know i don't even know and this voice oh i need a motorcycle it's asap turned on (laughs) someone get me a motorcycle i should be dating machine gun kelly yeah you should be (laughs) okay anyway anyways anyway ria how are you doing well francesca i am doing well but we have some stuff to talk about. Yeah. Obviously, we can't beat around the bush. It's time to share. It's time to share. And here's the thing. This is obviously an uncomfortable situation. It's not an ideal situation. And when I am put in those situations, I make jokes. You do. Right? In mm-hmm. an uncomfortable situation, humor is a way to cope. So while talking about this, if I'm cracking jokes, don't think I'm happy or whatever. It's just uncomfortable to talk about, especially because, like, this is... A podcast where I now have to talk about my relationship, which I get. I totally get that because Hank and I dated in a very public place. Yep. And now we must talk about the fact that we broke up. What? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Francesca knows I didn't just take her by surprise. You but, did what? No, I uh, yes, I yes. yes, I have been along this journey as well. <laughs> yes, uh, Hank and I did break up. People, I, I've noticed people kind of, I think, getting the hint. Maybe I've yeah. seen people like message and tweet stuff, and they're like, "Are you guys still together?" And I know that eventually, one way or the other, we were going to have to tell everybody. Yeah. And it feels kind of weird to like market the breakup and be like, "Oh, me and Hank broke up." Click here to listen, but yeah. that's what we have to do. We got to talk about it. We have to address it. So rip off the band aid. Yeah, rip off the band aid. Well, I just want to let everyone know kind of like what happened because I feel like in these situations you automatically assume the worst. Yeah. And because we talk about people's breakups all the time. If I didn't talk about my own breakup, I would be the biggest hypocrite mm-hmm. on the planet Earth. And also you're always wondering like what what really happened? Why did they really break up? So I will give you the details. Hank and I started dating when I was 19 years old. I am 23 now. I started almost working. 24. I'm actually almost 24. Um, so it's been just important. Yeah, very me. important. Only a July 26. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so it's been over like four years now. And I started working at Barcel when I was 19. And I, we started dating quickly after that, mm-hmm. I would say within like six months. Um, you know, I didn't go to college. I didn't have like a real college experience. And obviously we had a great relationship. We moved in together, got a dog. Everything was great. I, I wouldn't say that there was anything really wrong with mm-hmm. the relationship we didn't really fight at all one would say we we're almost too alike very very comfortable living together one would be me i said that yeah like we are very very similar so yeah there was nothing really wrong with the relationship we obviously love and respect each other very very much still but i kind of got Should a we little be respecting your privacy at this time yeah please everybody <laughs> i'm gonna put out a notes app please respect my privacy, please at, this respect my privacy at this time um 
I kind of just, you know, got a little frightened because, like I said, all those things, you know, started dating very young age. I didn't get that experience, like going out yeah. in the city, just having fun with my Barcelona's friends. It's been your whole life. It really has been. I really Every basically went from high school to one year of college yeah. to then Barstool. Yeah. And so I just got a little, you know, Hank, he just turned 28 and, you know, I felt like we were kind of in different paths where he was more ready to like settle down, maybe get a house. He did the whole thing. He was single for a while while, while working mm-hmm. at Barstool, you know, d- did dumb shit with his friends, like lived that life. Yeah. And I had been thinking like, I don't want to wake up one day when I'm 27, 28 years old and be like, wow, you know, what I, yeah. did I where just, did all my where did go? my time go? Yeah. I feel like my life has moved at a very escalated pace. I have an awesome job that I love so much and it all came so fast. Yeah. I, I'm still very young. So I'm like, well, if I have this awesome job now and I settle down now and like I mean, right. do this whole thing so fast, what is really left for yeah. me? And I feel like this is kind of necessary for my growth as a person. I feel like I need to experience this. I need to experience my life alone. I've never really did that like I had a boyfriend in high school and then all of a sudden I was here and then I had another mm-hmm. boyfriend and I just want to like be selfish a little bit and live my life alone and just do dumb things and hang out with my friends and just focus on myself my career that sort of thing and Hank was you know he gets it he was like I told like if I was in your spot yeah. I would also feel that way like I had that you didn't have that I get where you're coming from like there's a total mutual respect and understanding from Mm -hmm. both of our sides um which i really appreciate because obviously people expect us to like we work together so people are like oh how is this going to be at work is it going to be a problem we've been broken up i would say for like a month now and it has been totally fine at work like we're as fine as two people can be who dated for longer than four years lived together and now work together still and have split up right so it is what it is so people are surprised like people have been surprised around work because that's how well you guys right. get along like it's not like you you can't you're not feeling the tension like you guys yeah. can't even look at each other it's, yeah the people every, who it, nobody uh, has even noticed yeah the people <laughs> who n- know we're like wait what like yeah. because we've just been able to yeah. com- like just right. be and normal never, in the office like super couple at work either anyway, yeah no you know we, we so talked like, about yeah, that yeah, we just exactly. we never really showed never that really side did at that. work um so it, you know obviously like i wouldn't say the door is shut on any possibility mm-hmm. of being together in the future i just feel like right now it's necessary for me to just be alone and live my life as a a single girl that doesn't mean like getting wild and you know you're not gonna see me going crazy on the streets out here but this is what it is and obviously i love hank very much and i respect hank very much and i will continue to support everything that he does and i think he'll do the same for me and i think it'll be fine and i hope here's the thing like i know people are gonna make jokes i know people are gonna say whatever they want which is fine i totally get that it's the territory i just hope people take my word for it that we are not like nothing bad happened because i feel like people wish for that like like oh something must have happened that's just not the case and there's no like teams it's not like oh i'm on team marie i'm on team hank like it should all be yeah fine and that's really it i feel like i yeah i feel like i covered it all so oh and norman is with me by the way i i I feel like i have to (laughs) cover those grounds i'm staying on long island with my parents um well this was another thing our lease for our apartment is up august 1st and so the conversations were happening like do we get a bigger more expensive apartment do we get a house like and that's when i started getting like oh no my life is moving very very fast it's all flashing behind like before me and before like hank and i agreed that it is much better to end things right now while we still have love for each other rather than end up resent like stay together and end up resenting each other in a couple years and god forbid some one of us does something to hurt each other Mm -hmm. like that would be terrible that would be way worse than ending it now while we still very much like each other and can respect those things so yeah so i'm staying on long island for now and then i'll move to another apartment in the city at some point but i love long island in the summer so whatever norman is having a blast so nobody worry about that my family's you know and i are taking very good care of him he's loving the backyard so (laughs) it is it is what it is it's obviously a very sad situation not like you know easy to talk about or handle or even come to the conclusion to 
part of me was like, you know, so confused on what to do. It was Fran. Yeah. <laughs> Fran, Fran's aware. She's like, yeah, I know. Um, but because when you work together and you're thinking about all the other things besides the relationship itself. Right. And you're like. You're letting too many outside factors. Yes. Dictate how you felt in your relationship, which is why I felt pretty supportive of this deci- this decision. Mm-hmm. It yeah, just because- felt like it was the right thing at this time yeah and you see so many people i feel like at least in my life i've seen so many people just they're in a relationship and they're unhappy or maybe they're not completely unhappy but they're like oh you know what what's going on out there like i'm not 100 percent in this relationship and then they stay in the relationship and they end up just being fucking miserable complaining to everybody how much they hate their girlfriend they hate their boyfriend they hate their wife and then they do something stupid and I we just didn't want to be those people because we didn't have to be and now it leaves it open where if we want to get back together in the future at least we didn't end on a terrible note at least we can come back together again and see what happens so agreed look the I've you know I've talked to you about this a lot and I like I said I felt like this was the right decision didn't come out of the blue wasn't like some spur the moment decision you really put a lot of thought into this which i think i want you know people should know that too like it wasn't like oh i'm gonna break up like we're gonna break up it was like no there's there's a A lot lot of conversations conversations. a lot of thought like really debating what you felt was right but at this point it was like if there's any thoughts in your mind of doubt then it's like it's just not worth it right now to Mm -hmm. move into a new apartment and do all these big things and i'm happy for you i think that this is like going to be an exciting stage of your life thank you francesca and (laughs) that's kind of all i have to say about it yeah how are you feeling i guess is really like listen i i just explained it all very factually yeah Yeah. like how are you (laughs) doing i feel like i am and i said this to hank and we talked about this and he was like you can be as honest as possible because we know that people are going to be looking for me for details and just like we said we talk about this shit about other people i can't not talk about it myself um i would say i obviously am very sad at times and and whatever but at the same time i feel like this is good for me as Mm -hmm. a person i feel i had a really tough year in terms of like dealing with anxiety and depression i don't want to like bore people with that but it was i had a little bit of a tough year for myself and i feel like i'm coming really out of that like i've been uh, since this has all been happening i've been really focusing on myself working out getting up and just like doing you know staying active yeah where i feel like i wasn't doing that before i was kind of doing the same thing every day and now i'm i'm staying you got active into a serious I'm, rhythm that was just, just like doing nothing nothing for me yeah. and um it just feels like i'm obviously i want to stay distracted to get my mind off of what's happening and it's a good thing because i am doing things it's like yeah i i don't know i feel I feel excited about what's to come. I, I just feel like I'm a, I can focus on my career. Like even though Hank and I work together, when you're in a relationship or whatever, sometimes you just lose sight of things and I just feel like now I can really just focus on myself, my career and yeah. all that and I don't know. I, I it's summer, so yeah. I just feel I went to the strip club the other night. <laughs> that was that was a thrill. I mean it's, Brianna's birthday. Yeah, Brianna's birthday was a fucking blast. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's obviously a shitty situation. Nobody wins in this situation. It obviously sucks, but yeah. I think it will be a, and I think Hank will agree, it will be a good thing for both of us. We were both getting into a very comfortable routine mm-hmm. and... You haven't se- you haven't made decisions for just yourself in a very long time. And I'm, I, I, I feel like I'm far too young to do that, you know? Correct. I, Drake once said, I am really too young to be feeling this old, Francesca. Yeah. No, I, I know. I, the red flag waved to me when you were, when you were talking about this, like, apartment debate and moving and moving a house, hobo, wherever it is. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Slow down, Pump sweetheart. the brakes. <laughs> yeah i was like this is you got you got years to think of those things but it's like you, you gotta have fun go out do like yeah just, and i i i said this we're to, the best city in the world right i i said this to hang too i said like listen my life can't be all rainbows and butterflies from the time i'm 19 until i die because yeah. right now it has been that yeah since like 
I have had nothing but success and happiness and joy and good things come to me. And this, I'm not saying this is like ruining my entire life, but like, yeah, I need to feel different things. I need to experience different things in life in order to grow in every way of my life, mm -hmm. I feel like. I agree. And so she blossoms out yeah. of her shell now. Yes. <laughs> And so yes, because you were so shy before, shy and enclosed <laughs> before this. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's I, I've been staying at my house, obviously, and it's just I I got a newfound appreciation for my family, though, because yeah, I will say there was a period of time as well. Now we're just diving into my whole personal. Yeah, yeah. Life, but there was a period of time where, like, I would say I wasn't really. I wasn't not talking to my family, but we weren't getting along yeah. like we used to. Just weren't really seeing eye to eye. No, we weren't. And now that I've been home, we haven't gotten into one argument. I've been home for like a month. Yeah. We haven't gotten into one argument. We're having a good time. My sister's pissed because she's like, my husband gets along better with you. Like yep. we're, <laughs> we're just, it's all, you know, we're working it out. We're having a, we're having as best of a time as we possibly can yeah. in a shitty situation. And yeah. Singy for the summer. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I mean, I knew you were going to throw that in there. It's hard not to. It's, it's hard not to. It's just to. hard not to. It's hard not it's to. It's really hard not to. I may have shout said it once Lil, or twice. Shout out Lil Sass. <laughs> it is hard not to say it. But I think that I think that covers it all. I mean, I, I don't know what else. I feel like I just, like, yeah, I just gave my entire relationship out there. That fucking sucks. But at uh, the yeah, same well, time, I get it. You know, it's 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 awkward. hard when, you know, when the this environment, you grew up, like, you started in this environment. Mm-hmm. And it's like when it's all good stuff, it's like, ooh, love sharing. Let's I um, can't wait to talk about it and let's yeah. how we met and all these things. And then it's just like the I mean, way if it ends, it, it kind of goes the same way. I had to tell Dave. Like I had to like yeah, text yeah. Dave and yeah. let him know me and Hank broke up. Yeah. Like not like it not a very it's a very awkward situation just to be like because you don't know how anybody's gonna react, but hopefully everyone's cool. Hopefully everyone in the office is cool to both of us i think they will be i think Absolutely. we're both friends with everybody here so yeah i think if this breakup happened years ago maybe it would have been different but it's been so long that everybody knows yeah you guys each almost, individually so years much i've worked here no, i know what i'm saying like individually everyone knows both of you so well that it's like i think a lot of times people even forget that you were like a couple <laughs> yeah i mean that you know we really did not act like it yes. in the office yeah. so it is what it is we will continue on. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. And we'll see what happens. Yep. We shall see. Like I said, I went, I went to the strip club Thursday night. It was Bree's birthday. It was a lot of fun. I'm sad you missed out because you were in Montauk. And um, it was also a few It sounded very fun, but I also don't know if I would have been thriving. <laughs> you, I thought I'm about really that. a strip club gal. I, I thought about when I was there, I was like, would Fran be loving this or hating this yeah i think you would have had a good time oh I, we I were with i, you know, I think i would have had a hard had, time but i definitely would have been Lenny balls marty mush uh, yeah. the strip club yeah. <laughs> you're like no <laughs> you're just a little bit closer with them than i am and i think i'd be like why am i at the strip, why club, am I with at the strip club with marty i mean you know who loves this? <laughs> kelly keeks fucking loves the strip club man. oh well yeah she's thriving in that place it was awesome i also think being and at a Bree's birthday i think being at a strip club with a group of people who love the strip club also, how could you not enjoy, you know, how could you not yeah. have a good time? <laughs> right. I mean, it, it was just a, f a fun night in general. So more more of that to come, I guess. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I was thinking maybe just hitting it up weekly, like one of those, you know, like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> just having your, your reservation, your weekly reservation. My weekly dinner at the strip club. Yep. Who knows? Heard they got good steak. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, the summer is ours, Fran. Yep. Who, wh who knows? The world is our oyster, as they the say. I, the, I was going to say that, but I've said it so many times this weekend that I stopped myself. Not to you, but yeah. I've said... In general. Just in general. The world is our oyster. Yep. Oh, I also went to the Islanders game Saturday night, which awesome. was awesome. Unreal game. So much fun. All right, let's get into the yeah. topics. <laughs> I've talked enough now. Let's get into the topics. We got the Cruel Summer finale, which was amazing. I'm really excited to talk about that. We clear up the Erica Jane lawyer situation. Yep. We have an update on that. And we also have an update on the Chrissy Teigen, Michael Costello dumb fight that keeps on continuing on the internet. So let's get started with the Erica Jane situation. 
We've been saying it podcast after podcast, but summer is officially here, everybody. And that means you need to go to the store right now and pick up the new summer co-branded New Amsterdam Vodka. Head to your local liquor store. You could find it there. It's the same extra smooth 80 proof vodka now with custom Barstool labels, which is a very idea because look at where we work. We're at Barstool. We're here and now you can drink the New Amsterdam Vodka with the custom Barstool labels, which makes it even better. They are made from some of the finest quality grains from America's heartland, New Amsterdam, and vodka is five times distilled for unparalleled smoothness and filtered three times for a clean crisp finish now if you're like me you probably don't know what the hell that means do you know what it means i don't i just know that it tastes delicious so go out there get new amsterdam vodka the official vodka of barstool sports so we need to clear up the erica jane situation because on the last podcast we talked about how her lawyers dropped her and she was living in an la rental which i think is still true but the lawyer part is not true. Her lawyers are sticking with her yeah. in this scandal. We don't really have too much more to say about this. So we just wanted to throw out the update because, you know, we did a whole segment talking about how the lawyers were gone. Lawyers aren't gone. The lawyers at the end of last week filed to continue representing Erica Jane. Um, you know, they filed the paperwork not to. They filed the paperwork that they're back. And it all seems like it's okay now, which makes me think that that original statement was like maybe a threat, you know, like maybe she isn't paying her bills or something. And they were like, well, we're going to fucking drop you as a client. And then she coughed up the coughed up the money. I will say it's not a good sign in general that if they are already thinking about leaving her. Oh, yeah that she's clearly guilty like i I think the sentiment still stands what we said that she probably was really up to no good because i don't even think that would get out if all was well yeah yeah the (laughs) definitely like having your lawyers be in and then out and then in and then like it's yeah that's doesn't make you look like the picture perfect face of innocence the cleanest person on the block (laughs) yeah it doesn't at all so i mean truly i don't have anything more to say about it than that (laughs) Uh, but but we i i was adamant about putting it in because if you listen to friday and you go around you're telling people oh erica jane or her lawyers are gone they're not they're back the same ones and now we'll see what happens with this but she's still probably guilty as well probably yeah do 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 we have a special offer for everybody listening 64 dollars off right now for something very special francesca do you want to know what it is i sure do and embark breed and health dna kit for your little pup to figure out all those good traits about your pup learn the breed learn their genetics learn their health issues learn everything about them history family history their cousins norman's got cousins norman's got little cousins i didn't know about on running around this earth and he'll probably never meet them but we know that they exist and i love my dachshund norman he's a little cutie little wiener muffin and it makes me feel sad when i eat hot dogs because i feel like it reminds me of norman but that's besides the point i've eaten entire entirely too many hot dogs in the past few weeks and every time i go to norman i'm like oh norman i just had one of you and it's creepy it's 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 disgusting it's very weird and i keep doing it it needs to end but that's besides the point what matters right now is that we have an offer with code chicks and barkvet.com 64 dollars off usually it's uh 199 dollars so it goes down to 135 um and like i said you can discover so many things about your dog you can be surprised by the yeah. results that you get we're three and we're three for three on dogs on this pod yeah and using in- the embark test lola and flow we've also gotten it for them learned all their fun traits you know dogs they have dog breeds in them that we didn't know we would never have guessed would have never guessed and do you not yeah. want to know like do you not want to know about your dog because to mm-hmm. me it seems like if you listen to this message and you ignore it that means that you don't care about your dog <laughs> and i'm sorry yep. that's pretty shitty so if you <laughs> care about your dog go to embarkvet.com and use our promo code chicks and you will save 64 dollars with promo code chicks learn about your dog's inner secrets like i said the high highest rated dog dna test out there is embark so go to embarkvet.com use promo code chicks another follow-up chrissy teigen the saga continues 
We're just keeping you all informed, <laughs> doing our best. This is, if you're asked what happened, we're going <laughs> to give you the answer. We will provide you with the facts. We will provide you with an answer. Do we want juicier stories? Do we want something better than Chrissy Teigen Opinion and Michael Costello? Wise, I don't have much. <laughs> no, because we don't care about these two anymore. But yeah. we will tell you what happened, of course. Mm, I still care about Chrissy Teigen, I think. Not in a, not in like I care, like, but like when I see news about her, I still click. Yeah, she's polarizing. Yeah. Yeah. At this point. Yes. Um, okay. So after what we said last week, where we summed up, you know, towards the end of Michael Costello saying this stuff about Chrissy Teigen, more and more people started commenting on Michael Costello, not in a good way. I don't think Michael Costello is a good guy. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think he is. From the reports, from what I'm we not see, so not sure. Good. So Chrissy Teigen put out an entire statement, another one, very long, and this was different because she didn't. Um, she posted pictures of the statement. It said statement on behalf of Chrissy Teigen. So I believe written by you know probably a publicist, someone professional put these words out. Said that. Chrissy um, has apologized for the tweets that she has put out from a decade ago. She was very surprised when Michael Costello said this. And then she provided, uh, the lawyer provided screenshots of a Instagram, of Instagram of them uh, interacting. Of Michael Costello replying to some of her stories. Um, January 2019 he sent her something January 28th, 2019. He asked her, are you going to the Grammys? Um, April 16, 2020. Hi, Chrissy, would you want to help? And that's cut off. Lo looks beautiful. Love the lip color. 2018 replied to her story. And the statement also really laid out how the screenshots that Michael posted of their DMs could have been doctored. Like just some details were off. Like the formatting of Instagram is just not the same if they were screenshots from 2014, profile pictures didn't match up, things like that. She also wrote out a whole long caption that she has since deleted. <laughs> now the statement is up on her Instagram without her own caption. But she wrote, no idea what the fuck Michael Costello is doing. He just released a statement where he didn't at all acknowledge how fake the DMs were and now claims to have emails that don't exist. So while he conjures those up, hopefully with someone more talented and fakes this time. And remember yesterday how confused he was about Leona Lewis's stylist being so kind to him in recent years? Well, imagine my surprise when I have these from the past three years. Please do not bully this man under the masquerade of defending me. I've taken it all. I've heard it all. I just beg for you to know the truth. Michael, you are now causing actual pain to people who are trying to better themselves enough or this will, all caps, go further not here, but an actual court of law. And every dime we win will go to an anti-bullying charity focused on turning this shit show into a positive. I wish you peace and healing. I have some places I've been attending if you'd like the connects. Um, on top of that, uh, Fallon from Real Housewives of Atlanta, the whole Porsche mm -hmm. team. Yep. Fallon put her out her own instagram story about michael costello not okay. good another one she said she had the same experience with him except as a model and because of this traumatic experience unfortunately it was the end of my pursuit to become a fashion model i just couldn't bear the embarrassment him and his team made me feel very uncomfortable and inadequate i was 23 years old living in la with not much but a dream went to audition for his la fashion week where he complimented me on my body and my runway walk i was ecstatic I received an email with a list of underwear to purchase and instructions for the show. I'm thinking to myself, I'm 5'6", and I've been chosen to walk, which I never thought would happen for me. When I arrived, I had my Victoria's Secret bag in hand with the underwear we were instructed to bring and was told to wait in line for makeup. I see Michael and his sister talking in a corner and looking at me with this look on their faces as if I was scum on the earth. Then, in front of all the models and his team, they come over to me and say, Someone was supposed to call you. We don't need you for the show, and you have nothing for you to wear. All the models gasped and covered their faces. I was embarrassed and ashamed. I ran outside and cried for two hours. I never auditioned to model again. It pains me to hear that Leona Lewis experienced such trauma. I pray this was a learning opportunity for Michael and his team. Also not good. Michael put out another statement, you know, uh, 
still backing up what he said, like not really admitting what he said, you know, was doctor or whatever. Um, just continue to say like Chrissy Teigen has through the years continued to try and hurt his career and make sure he didn't get opportunities. And then he ends it the same way every time. Like I wish her nothing but peace. I'm not no longer. I'm no longer going to speak about this at this time. And then something else comes out, and then he speaks about it again. So I'm, I kind of think this is the end, but I don't know. Chrissy kind of sounds like Chrissy might actually take this to court. I mean, okay, he seems like a bad guy. I feel like we yeah. can put that out there. He doesn't seem like the best person. No. I just don't... When does this end, right? Like, I think more, we say, yeah. could this be the end? Who knows? Because I thought last uh, week we thought was the last end. week was the end. <laughs> yeah. But then we were like, somebody's got to say something about Leona Lewis at this point. But now everyone's yeah. just coming out more about Michael Costello. This guy probably should have kept his mouth shut from the beginning. This is a lesson for everybody, I guess. But... At the end of the day, I guess now he's just being exposed as a bad guy. Yeah. And he's got to take that. And um, John Legend did step into the ring as well. You know, he hasn't mm. been as vocal about it because, you know, this is kind of Chrissy's thing. And I'm sure he's supporting her and, you know, I'm seems at, like a perfect I just husband. Said, mm, as if I, I know, didn't know. Mm, yeah. Like you're, you're telling me, mm, like yes. I'm listening yeah. to our podcast. I, wow. I just responded. <laughs> <laughs> like I know. <laughs> um, Michael posted a, a t statement on Twitter uh, on the 18th and wrote, thought about whether I should write this or not, but I have to. If someone were to say anything about my family, I would defend them to the max. I understand where you're coming from, at John Legend. I respect and love your music. I even have four of your songs on my playlist. Not that you care. But your wife has hurt good people and done a lot of shady things offline to ruin other people's careers. You may not know that, but she does. John Legend wrote back, stop. You know you made all this up. Please just stop. I'd really love to know who put you up to all this. Why fabricate an entire narrative? Did you want to be in the news this badly? Why fake a set of DMs? Don't talk to me about my wife as if I haven't lived with her, married her, and raised kids with her. I know who she is, and y'all didn't even do a good job of mimicking her voice in those fake-ass DMs. By the way, when are you going to admit they were fake? So oh, pop off then, John. That's what I'm saying. Listen, I feel like the whole get your name in the news thing may be true because when's the when when have we ever even heard Michael Costello's name until now? I know. And he is definitely getting his name in the news, not for the right reasons. Not at all. Oh, and his final tweet was admit they were fake, please. Um so, you know, he he had been posting multiple times on Twitter saying, you know, Chrissy apologized for her tweets, but after her apology, Michael uh, Costello fabricated a DM exchange between them. This exchange was made up, completely fake, never happened, receipts below. And then um, he tweeted a Business Insider article that went through everything as well. Honestly, I don't know why anyone would fake DMs to desert, insert themselves in this narrative, but that's what happened. I encourage everyone who um, breathlessly spread this lie to keep that same energy when they correct the record. So John's out here on Twitter making sure that what he feels is the right story is put out. Now, I... I trust John Legend. <laughs> like, I feel like John Legend has, you know, whatever acknowledged that her mm -hmm. Chrissy's ba past tweets, bad. What happened with Courtney Stodden, bad. But is coming to her defense here because truly believes that this was a, f a fake job, like a, just a made up thing. Fugazi. Yeah, correct. I will say that. Of course, he'll obviously defend yeah him, right he, yeah I, I but i don't think he jumps in often so i he will doesn't, say it, he it does speak yeah volumes that he did jump in at this point in time yeah exactly like he didn't really get involved in the courtney stodden stuff right because that he like that was Chrissy's. i would say i'm more of a john legend fan than a chrissy teigen fan 100 <laughs> percent retweet <laughs> no it was like hard, hard, like hard agree one the one word noah said on yeah the podcast. i'm here by the way <laughs> yeah retweet <laughs> oh which we can clarify by the way we didn't put it in the intro because you know we had a lot to talk about but the general consensus was that Rhea and i were right about the uh, just i'm over it about, about <laughs> the of course kendall he's and, over it the kendall and Haley getting some paid. people are really mad at me that's listen that's the that's yeah. the heat you get Look, you get when you're in an this argument. This episode is a big follow up episode. <laughs> Lots of follow ups. Lots of follow ups. Following up, yeah. we got a lot of professionals in our DMs, and they were very adamant that they got paid. Also, and so we're going with that. Feels trivia, good to be on the right side of history. That just made me remember that um, for the Titanic video clip, I didn't shout out this girl, and apparently I've missed. She apparently I've skipped two of her. I've used two of her <gasps> questions and didn't shout her out no. for either. So shout out. Mesa, I think it's Mesa. Uh, well, you better get it right if Mesa. you're going to shout her out yeah, now. Yeah, shout out Mesa. 
Sorry. From where? Sorry about that. Uh, fuck. Uh, I would have to. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> I could look at. Uh, let me search her name in my email. Maza. It's okay. You can cut. Maza from uh, South Florida. Shout oh. out Maza. Shout out Maza from Twice. South Florida. Thank you, Maza. Sorry, about, Sorry that. about Noah. <laughs> <laughs> we must apologize for him. Oh man, but no, I'll. We're all good. It was it was very funny seeing everyone's reaction. We, we had were to all pretty up. heated on and Thursday. And I love to see that people enjoyed it. Yeah, yes. I love to see a little fire. Sometimes a lot of you need are a me fucking just passion. Like an idiot. Like <laughs> sometimes people are like, is this guy for idiots. real? Like, how did he get a job? I saw that. <laughs> I did see that I one as well. And I will say this, Noah: you yeah. are dynamite at your job. Dying so you. good. And Thank don't you. forget it. Yeah. I just Maybe to not an up. expert in other areas. Well, but it's fine. <laughs> no, but I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You are. He's incredibly so good, at, good his at his job. So good at his job, and that's really all that matters. Yes. We all love each other. Okay, moving on. <laughs> we love you, Noah. Yeah. <laughs> Take your top off. <laughs> Everybody, if you did not watch the cool summer yeah. finale. Do not, do not listen. listen. To this. Do not listen. Shut the podcast over. It's done. It's over. Oh my god! Have a, have have a great, great week. week, everybody. But if you did watch the finale, stay tuned because we're talking about it right after this commercial break. Okay. Just uh, you know, give me a second here. Got to put my got to put my glasses on. Oh, are, are those oh your Felix god. Grace? Different person. Yeah, I'm looking at my phone. Woo! Looking at my phone. I was wearing Smoke these show. episode. For, I was wearing these all episode on Friday. Rhea, I had, did have some massive teacher vibes going. Yeah, um, you did. For the Friday episode. But these are <laughs> my favorite blue light glasses. I'm obsessed with them. I wear them all the time. Um, I also think that like blue light glasses are so great because they have a purpose. But if you were one of those kids who, this sounds so obnoxious, who like just had great eyesight growing up, me <laughs> and just like but in high school some of my friends would wear their glasses and i'd be like oh my god they look so cute like i kind of wish i had glasses yeah i didn't really need glasses but i kind of faked my test like i would <laughs> when you know i would like act like i yeah. didn't know what i was seeing so that i could get glasses and that's why blue light glasses are amazing because i'm living out like mm -hmm. like oh god i look so cute with my glasses yes you do <laughs> and you can get them um, prescription if you do need those, but these, the ones I'm wearing, non-prescription. But Felix Gray are one of the first people out there who realize that like, hey, can't be looking at your screen all day. It's bad for your eyes, not meant for it. Um, you can filter out the blue light with the blue light glasses. The um, lenses filter 15 times more blue light that can make screen time tough on eyes and disruptive to sleep. You can check them all out right now at felixgrayglasses.com slash chicks. These are my uh, love lace. These ones, if you're looking for the ones that I'm wearing, which, like I said, obsessed with. So if you feel like your screen time um, is really high, maybe you get headaches. I dealt with that a lot. I would go home and be like, oh my God, I looked at my computer and my phone all day and go to sleep with a headache. But when I have the glasses on, I really do feel like it helps. They also have a 30-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose but eye strain. So guys, come on, super important. Go try it. You'll look cute while you do it and you'll be saving yourself from all these symptoms that you get when you're looking at your screen all day long. So get yourself a pair of glasses made for the 21st century and designed for modern, hardworking eyes. You have nothing to lose except maybe a little eye strain. Go to felixgrayglasses.com slash chicks for the best blue light glasses on the market. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash chicks. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges, felixgrayglasses.com slash chicks. God damn, was this finale unreal. It was, I will say, it was very satisfying. So because satisfying. Because we've talked about this, um, and I think the consensus, at least between the two of us, and you know, Noah's been watching as well, and my friends that have been watching, was that Mallory was up to some shady shit. Mm -hmm. Something was going on with Mallory. We knew Mallory it. Mallory was such an annoying We knew pest. she was going <laughs> to be involved somehow. And she was, um, wasn't exactly the outcome I expected. <laughs> like I never kind of thought things would fall off for Mallory, but I'm just happy stuff happened because yeah. for a little bit during the show, it was kind of like, is anything going to happen? Is there the any middle new episodes, developments? It started to slow down for sure. What is happening? We got so many surprises. First of all, Kate 
killing him yeah. was un- unreal, unexpected, did not see that coming at all. Did you? No. I'm just confused why I had did... a little bit of an inkling at the end of last episode, but before that, no. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but why did they say it was like a shootout? Like if they found him dead. Yeah, that was a bad... That doesn't make sense. No, no. So they... To be honest, that was a kind of a little bit of... I had a problem with that because it just wasn't well... That wasn't really well done. No, it was just the news... Because he was killed by a gunshot wound... But the, like the police, why didn't like they the police say, would be like, no, hey, the, we didn't no, kill him. No, literally, the, the, they answer, say, the answer literally was... <laughs> the new, like they were On the show, they were like, oh, the news just ran with it because he had a... A gunshot wound, but it was like you. The police, police didn't look into that like, a little hey, bit more. Better shoot, story. Found him dead. Better yeah. story would have been that he killed himself, right? And that, and then it turned out that she killed him, right? If if the if the whole thing was that he died from a like self inflicted gunshot yes. wound, then okay. But saying it was like a shootout the whole time, it was like, well, who saved her? Was there someone else? So it kind of makes no sense that the police were just like. <laughs> He could have been shot, but like they just not care who that other person yeah, was. They didn't even they didn't even nope, they look just, into yeah, the fact how he. They're like, oh died. yes, he got like, oh, he right got on. shot. We don't know who did it though. Yeah, I mean, I I thought that besides the plot hole there, yeah. the giant one, I think that that was a really unexpected twist. I thought that was great. Yeah, no, it was uh, very great. emotional. I was sobbing, obviously, yeah. and then Jeanette, that creep. Jeanette is such a little creep. I can't. First of all, amazing actress because yeah, she sells it really she well. She really sold scared it. me. Scares me. She yeah, she really sold it. And I, first of all, I thought there were multiple twists in this episode, and yeah. the whole season it was kind of like what's going to happen, which is why I liked the finale so much because not only was Kate killing, oh, I keep forgetting his name, Martin, 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 Kate killing Martin, a twist, but Jeanette and Kate talking and them discovering that Mallory was the one to yeah. actually see Kate and then Kate and Mallory ending up together they yeah. they're now they kissed and they seem like they're happy together which is like okay Kate just keeps attaching to herself to bad people because Mallory literally saw her and didn't tell anybody and she blew up Jeanette's entire life for thinking she did that but then Jeanette did do that yeah. Jeanette did hear her in the basement like a little creep and I thought that was an amazing twist. I thought when she went on TV, so, so she was going to say, when she was like, and I have one thing to say to Kate. I thought she was going to say I Mallory. She, I, no, I thought she was going to either say Mallory or she was going to say that Kate killed him. And she was going to be like, Kate Wallace is a murderer. And yeah. then a whole new season would have continued. But boy, oh boy, yeah. what will happen next season? What is even going to happen next season? Because I don't know. Is, is anyone ever going to find out that Jeanette actually heard her because now we know yeah it just got renewed so i feel like they're gonna have to there's a lot of things that i would like to be filled in if anyone (laughs) if anyone at freeform is listening um i and i think there's some storylines that i'm actually glad like sometimes with shows like this you are very satisfied with one season you're like this it's over murder mystery we don't need to we don't need to keep going on like does it need like a new season it's just like a good short form whatever limited series this felt like that from the beginning to me but then towards the end now i'm like well thank god there's a second season i need so much more explained the police stuff mallory uh uh jeanette and jamie i guess are a couple like bat like you know those kind of iffy but like jeanette and then also like where's creep. jeanette's mom where's jeanette's mom what happened with Jeanette's brother and Ashley? You're asking Jeanette's brother and amazing Ashley. Amazing questions. Yeah. Keep going. And, uh, Jeanette's brother <laughs> stole You're those You're firing me- him off. <laughs> Jeanette's brother stole those messages from Ashley's computer. Any consequences? <laughs> yeah, none. There's <laughs> There are many plot holes that yeah. are not uh, tied second up with a season, bow. Second season, baby. The second season is coming. And I, I just think, Jeanette, that dirty little freak. I, I the she, whole played, thing is, she played it so well because fucking creepy. Her face at the end of the episode. Oh, I got chills. When was, she clearly made the decision that she wasn't going to tell anyone that Kate was in the fucking basement. How can somebody do that? I know it's a scripted show, but how Mallory and Mallory and Jeanette deserve Jeanette each other. Is a sociopath. Like she's yes. what Mallory did, I think, is less bad because she it didn't if you just saw it was her more in the of an window. Explanation too. If you saw her in the window, she's like on the phone. She looks like it's like, oh maybe she's like what she said, yeah. Wants to be there. Like 
it, you should still like notify the well, police. Well, she said but, at like, first she, she didn't n- even free. think that that could have been Kate Wallace. Yeah. Right. Right. Like at first yeah. you're like, oh, that's a, like she said, his sister but she or her girlfriend told Kate when or they something. Started hanging up. But when she watched the news and it was like Kate Wallace rescued from Martin Harris's house, yeah, she probably. Yeah. Should have said something, but Kate clearly didn't seem to care. I don't know why. Or... That was shocking. I'm like, oh, they're just friends still. Yeah, I More think maybe friends. she's just like, yeah, feel true. like she has nobody. So it's like Mallory was like her saving grace after being. I felt really bad down. for for Kate. I really felt yeah. for Kate. Lots going on. I think they were all the the moral of the story is like they all equally did bad things. Like not maybe kind of equal. I don't really I don't know think Kate, if Kate did, did anything bad. bad thing. I mean Kate. Well, I mean, Kate like naming when, Jeanette was bad, yes, was bad. but I don't think... Oh, uh, yeah, no, I sh- you shouldn't blame Kate for yeah, like being Kate, groomed. Yeah, no. yeah. But and like, also her murdering him, like, okay. I don't yeah, think... I think people him. would understand that. Total. And I will give um, the actor who played Martin, very good. They were all amazing, but yeah, he was did, really good. Like, when he, in that basement scene, when he was... a Tr- like about to shoot himself but then couldn't and then like screamed mm-hmm. like i was like who i got goosebumps he did a really he did a really good job anytime you have like a a creep on a show yeah. who does a good job playing a creep is it oh like the stanley Lovers. tucci yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and stanley tucci confirmed great guy yeah. So. yeah great actor this and yeah. like a teacher just shows you like nothing ever good happens from teacher student relationships yeah i think i think everybody knows that i'm very confused I can't why you just brought up that show that that's just a stupid that show doesn't that one of the i mean worst it was endings of that all was time. like a, a bad show that was just so bad that it was good oh we couldn't look away it from it but it was hilarious. terrible but the Actually, beginning was so much the first few episodes were so much better than the last oh yeah it got really weeks. weird it got very weird and and sad and dreary and terrible this at least is like it's all sad dreary and terrible but like you're like ooh. this yeah. is more of like a mystery that we're, was just like, like oh, oh and like I want Jeanette's mom to come back April there's so much more Anatomy. substance to this show a teacher had yeah. zero substance the only thing a teacher had was a student yeah. teacher relationship and also Nothing I, else. I also soundtrack. didn't care yeah. about any of the other categories so in that show i mean categories c- characters in that show um yeah. cruel summer i like i'm yeah. curious about all the other kind of dynamics vince and the and ben and the yeah no, there's a lot going on with jamie about a teacher now. i'm the fucking man yeah. oh yeah he looked in the mirror after banging oh, his teacher i'm the fucking you can't blame him for thinking that no, at that age but terrible no, but never never was, get in a relationship with was, your students kids. Yeah. i mean teachers yes <laughs> Cruel Summer was very psychological. Like it really like dug deeper into that grooming relationship Mm -hmm. than I thought it was going to. Like it just really showed it in a way that I've never really thought about before from both sides, like from Martin's side and Kate's side. You know what I enjoyed and um obviously like i i haven't been put in this situation so i don't know how people who have been put into the situation feel about it but i thought that they did a good job with showing the therapist explaining to kate why things were not okay and not what she thought because i think a lot of people can learn from that like just in general like learn about grooming like how somebody who is being groomed can feel a certain way about a situation but somebody on the outside can tell them uh no you you were being manipulated yeah so i thought that whole aspect of it was interesting annabelle being the gun was a good twist also i yes. really did not uh, think that that was creepy yeah, that was it was super it creepy. was really creepy but i think olivia holt when she when she came on the show and said that she was so surprised mm-hmm. about the ending and she didn't guess it i think makes sense it makes sense because i don't think <laughs> anybody out. can really guess what happened here but I'm excited for season two. What? Like, Jean- Jeanette. What do we do with her? She, like, I, well, I'm She's inter- a menace. She's a menace to society. It's going to be... I'm, I am excited for a second season. I was... when At first, and I remember I turned you at our desk when I saw the tweet that it was renewed. It was like, what, last week? It was, it was before we watched the finale. It was the day of the finale yeah. or the day before. And we were like, well, what's going to happen in yeah, this finale? Yeah, we were like, then? does this show really need a second season? And we were and also... Now, it makes sense. We were nervous about what we were going to see in the finale because we were like, fuck, are we not going to find anything out now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... We were worried because of the second season yes. that they were going to leave us on a cliffhanger. But they did not. I mean, they, kind of. Well, there's many <laughs> questions. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I feel... 
we know now. Yeah, like yeah. we know what happened. Yeah, definitely. And it's not good. Right. It's not it's good, just, babes. Is the real <laughs> truth ever come out? I guess maybe we'll, that'll be the second season. Unless some other heinous crime happens. No, Je- Jeanette's, um, gonna, Jeanette's a hometown hero now. She's never going to let anybody know she heard her in the basement. No, I know. But what hap- So what happens next? What's going to be... Well, I guess they we'll, got to come up with something. Fran, I guess we'll find guess out we'll in find season out. two. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to it. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Just a reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And this is episode 299, 299. We are hitting episode 300 on Wednesday. So we love you all very much. And as a gift to us, hit subscribe. Like I said, for giving giving you 300 episodes. Come on, guys. We're fucking grinding our asses off. At least subscribe if you're listening on Apple or Spotify. Years of talking. Years of talking. Years of hard work and dedication. (laughs) At least hit that subscribe button. We love you all. Have a great week.